Hey, welcome to my Pokemon Journeys, episode 79, The Moon and Sun, Karu and Karuhi review. The three kids are off to this castle in Johto, Eclipse Castle, as there's a festival. With Kaharu coming along as Umbreon and Espeon are special Pokemon, so it'll be a good chance for her and Eevee. Considering the last Kaharu centric episode we had were the special episodes, it helps that the last episode focused on her wasn't the Vaporeon episode. I think there's a risk of it feeling repetitive to have Kaharu meet an Eevee trainer and by the end of the episode not having decided on what evolution to let Eevee become. Luckily the staff are spacing it out well, but it did remind me a lot of the setup of the Vaporeon episode. Eevee, and by extension Kaharu, run off as Eevee feels the presence of Espeon and Umbreon, and while they're gone, an old lady gives Ash and Go a history lesson about how in the past the castle was attacked in the Eclipse Festival, and the Lords Espeon and Umbreon protected him, leading to the crest of the two Pokemon being put in place. And that resembles an Eclipse when the Sun and Moon become one, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool little story. Shoto excels in its lore department, so extra additions like this are really nice. This lady is actually the current Lord, and is passing the title down. There's a girl at the Sundial praying that everything will go well, and she's going to become the new Lord. And that's when Eevee and Kahara arrive, and Espeon saves Eevee as it falls off cliff because it's all a future. And the girl at the altar is a dead ringer for Kaharu. We've seen episodes like this before, so it's cool to see Journeys do a doppelganger episode. This girl is called Haruhi. Kahara and Haruhi swap outfits at the castle, and we talk about Eevee not yet evolving, copying other Pokemon, and Eevee having particularly unstable genes. Haruhi gets the idea that Kaharu wants to let Eevee choose its path, so she recounts her Umbreon and Espeon also chose her own path. And after a rousing speech, for sure Haruhi will be accepted as the new lord. And again we got some nice history. The lord who got attacked, Hisahi, was attacked by his brother Tsukiya, and it'd be Haruhi's duty to stop something like that happening ever again. Unfortunately a ninja watches in a tree and the strikes as Kaharu is still in Haruhi's outfit. She's captured by the ninja and he escapes, leaving Eevee to rally the others, it kind of just happens, but I thought it was fun. Eevee proceeds to rally the boys and take them over to her as Haruhi begins the ceremony. The ninja arrives at the castle and he realises that Kaharu wasn't Haruhi, and now she's a bargaining chip. He wants to be the new lord. So she complies and is about to name him, Katsuki, as the new lord. But the boys and Eevee found Kaharu and they're back just in time. Now I'm sure one little complaint people will have is that Go seems ready to help to save Kaharu and Haruhi, telling Grookey that they have to save them. So maybe he was about to finally use Grookey in battle. However, Haruhi and Kaharu take the lead here. That makes a lot of sense to me. This isn't Go or Ash's episode, it's about Haruhi's ascension to the Lordship and Kaharu getting to know the evolutions. It's their fight. So Katsuki battles with both of them and it shows off the evolution's different strength. But really, I'd think Espeon would be the more offensive one since Umbreon's offense sucks in game. This also shows off Eevee's copycat. Yeah, we know what that is. To no surprise, the girls win. I think the main takeaway from this is that this shows that the two evolutions work together as a unit, which may not be suited to Kaharu's Eevee as it's kind of a lone Pokemon. And a big twist, but not really, is that Katsuki is descending from a traitor brother Sukiya. And it's a pretty touching moment as Haruhi announces herself as a new lord, but also announces that Katsuki will be helping as they are technically related. He's the family's missing moon while she's the sun. They make up each other's flaws and support each other. It's a pretty nice message and they can make a new future together. I've got to say, I think I enjoyed this episode a lot more than I did the Vaporeon episode. It's got a nice little emotional story between the family. It's not like the lore is introduced to the story just for the hell of it. It matters and it comes to a conclusion in a satisfying way. Admittedly, I think the main cast just felt like spectators this episode. Even Kaharu felt like she was just sort of along for a ride, but it's still pretty solid. Without this little story, I think the episode would have fallen pretty flat, but they did show off the two evolutions in a pretty decent way, and I think it really comes across like Eevee won't evolve into either if it does evolve, though I think everyone is just expecting Gigantamax as its path. I mean, even the last image of the credits uses for Gigantamax EV art, so yeah. I think this is a pretty decent episode, not the best, and I think it could have used more from a doppelganger side of things to make it a little bit more interesting. Thinking back to Dawn of a Royal Day from Diamond and Pearl, that was essential to the plot. And I don't think it changes much if Haruhi looked different in this episode. I can recommend it if you like Kaharu or little stories to do with Pokemon lore. But please let me know how you feel in the comments below. 